Ever since I was very little, like some of the Johnson kids' age or my daughter's age, I just had this love for God. I loved actually spending time alone in my room and just reading my Bible. I liked singing the church songs. I loved doing all that. But when I entered into my later teen years, that's when my zeal for God just exploded. And as I was reading through the books of the Bible, I was just saying, you know what? Here is an amazing God. He's perfect and holy. He loves me. And here's the reality that a lot of people are going to be lost. And so at that point, I got really just like, I need to go tell people about Jesus. Except I had some immaturity of faith at that time. I just didn't have the wisdom necessarily. But I, I had this passion and zeal where I would go out and I was telling people about Jesus. People at school, people whoever. People just thought, man, that guy is just crazy. And I'm like, you know what? Do you not understand that there's a God, that there's a heaven and hell? And there's somewhere you're going to be there for eternity. And, and I got so enraptured with that that people were just like, wow, what is this that he's doing? Like, everyone I knew knew that. I talked with every one of my friends. I talked with teachers. And one of them I thought was going to send me to the principal's office. And different things like that. But as I thought about it, a lot of people were just not coming to Christ. And I just was thinking, why is it not working? How come I'm there and I'm teaching the Word of God? I have this passion. I have this zeal. I have this desire. And people are lost. And I care more about them than they obviously care about themselves because... You know, I just want them to have eternal life that they just don't understand. And I just kept praying to God and praying to God, asking, how is it, God, that I'm not being effective? I've told everyone you've told me to tell. I've, I've shown it. People call me the Jesus freak at school. People think I'm weird. They, I would pray over my lunch in front of everyone at school. I mean, I wasn't being ashamed. I thought, What's, why is this not working? And so as I was studying the Bible, I, was, I, I do this thing where even since I was in my teen years, I had this mentality that when something would go wrong or when I was struggling with my life or my effectiveness for the Lord, I would go back to one of the Gospels and just read through it and see what did Jesus say and what did Jesus do. And as I thought about that, the whole time as I was thinking about that, I opened up the Gospel of John and I prayed to God and I was saying, God, just give me wisdom. I have this desire for people to be reached. I have this desire for people to know you. I have a desire for people to be forgiven of their sins. I just want people to know you, God. And I would pray fervently for this and asking him for wisdom in this regard. And the amazing thing is God responded in an amazing way. A light bulb just went off in my head. Because I found where I was struggling in being effective. My passion was right. My zeal was right. A lot of my truth was right, but the way that I approached people and the way that I approached how I went about sharing Jesus was wrong. And it happened as I was asking myself, how did Jesus respond to me? How did Jesus save me? How did Jesus make a difference so that I understood his glory, his holiness, were to the point where I wanted to submit to the Lordship of Christ and just give him everything? I found this answer in, in John chapter 1, the Gospel of John. Because it showed me God's character through Jesus Christ, and it also showed me how he approached people. And the more I thought about this, the more I thought, you know, this is how Jesus reached my life. This is how Jesus dealt with people in his time. This is how he dealt with the woman at the well, or to the lepers, or the tax collectors and the prostitutes. This is how he touched the lives of people who were hurting. In John chapter 1, verse 14 through 17, I got the answer to my prayer. And it says this. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning Him. He cries out saying, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because He was before me. From the fullness of His grace, we have received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. One of the interesting things that I realized that day was that Jesus had the character, the nature, and He epitomized the concept 
of truth and grace. In fact, this scripture makes known he's full of it. He embodies it. He epitomizes the concept of truth and grace. That when he came, Moses was the great lawgiver, but he gave a law and he gave power to the law in which that was the power of sin. 1 Corinthians, Paul makes known the power of sin is the law because that's when God made known his revelation of all that he desires. And then when people understood that accountability and they fell short, they were guilty of sin and that which led to death. But here we understand that Jesus came and brought truth and grace. You see, one of the things that I faltered in was I had a lot of the truth, but I wasn't teaching whole truth. And I wasn't living a life that epitomized the concepts of the truth that I was sharing. And, I, and oftentimes we take, talk about the unmerited favor of God through grace and all the ways that he blesses us and forgives us and saves us and allows us to know him. But I wasn't being gracious to people. And I was giving people a hard time understanding the vastness of God's true and great grace and forgiving us and loving us and washing our sins away because I was lacking any grace towards other people. I didn't care as much about people's feelings. I, I didn't take time to understand people's hearts. I didn't know what was going on in their lives. All I was doing was the wrong thing of Bible bashing people. And that was the hard part was I was so excited for the Lord that I just wasn't wise in how I was going about it. And you look at how Jesus did things. Jesus spoke hard a lot of times with accountability, mainly to the Jewish leaders. But when he dealt with people, he was very gracious in teaching the truth. And that was one of the things that it just hit me was saying, am I being like Jesus? It, when people look at me, do they say, he's so full of truth and grace? Because that's one of the things we learn from this passage is that God is full of truth and grace. That there's no lie on his mouth. That he speaks the truth in order to benefit you. That he's so full of grace that he's eager to bless you. He's eager to save you. He's eager for you to know him in a variety of different ways. He blesses us. Everything comes from God. And so when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, this is God's nature and character and demonstrated through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And I just thought, he's, that's his character. Is that my character as well? One of the interesting things that you actually learn is that people talk about how God speaks truth. Truth is really the realities of what actually exists. Like gravity, it exists. That's a, it's a truth. But we also understand from the Bible, we learn a lot of different spiritual truths. And those spiritual truths, we learn about God and His kingdom and His salvation and so forth. But one of the things that I also found interesting was in the Jewish culture, even though this is the New Testament with Greek, in the Old Testament, a lot of the time when the word truth was used among the Jews, it actually meant that which brought people together in unity. It was a very personable thing. And the, the contrasting concept of truth a lot of times used in the Old Testament among the Jews was the idea that falsehoods or untruths would actually lead to division and breaking up of relationships. And I think about this concept of truth, how God brought truth so that we could have a personal relationship with Him, so that we could be reunified with Him, and the way that that came about was actually through this grace that we would receive through Jesus Christ. That He would speak this message of truth. He would live in a way that would be consistent with this message. And so when people saw the grace of Jesus in the hand touch and with the healing and with the gentle word, they would get an understanding of the ultimate grace that would be given to them through him, through the forgiveness of sin. And I thought, that is actually how we need to treat people. And I thought, you know what, I, I didn't really take the time to be gracious. I mean, have you ever had that experience where you would got so excited for Jesus and you, you could cite book, chapter, and verse, but you didn't really care or seem to understand people? I did that, and I thought, you know what, that's where I'm going wrong. And so it was in my late teens that I really decided to practice the concept of empathy, the practice of learning to listen. The, the idea of if I want people to listen to me, I must first listen to their hearts and speak in a way that I'm teaching the truth where their hearts will be receptive to the message of Jesus Christ. And so I, in this, these years, I really did spend a lot of time in my later teens and in my college years.